So back in April, we had the moon pass in front of the sun in a total solar eclipse. And when it did, darkness came upon those who were in the path of totality. Now, if you were able to witness this with your own eyes, you could look up and see the moon. The side of the moon that we could see was blacked out. Now, a very long time ago, there were people who believed that the moon emitted its own light. But if that were true, then why was it not emitting its own light during the solar eclipse? Was the moon light turned off? Was it not charged up enough like a glow-in-the-dark sticker to emit its own light? Some people have said that the moon is transparent. Why didn't the sunlight shine through the moon instead of around it? Is it sometimes transparent and sometimes not transparent? Is it like a light bulb? Now, I already know what a few people out there are thinking. In Genesis 1:16, it reads, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, there is no direct indication in the Bible that explicitly suggests the moon's light is reflected sunlight. The Bible generally speaks about the moon as a light source without delving into the scientific mechanics behind it. Let's keep in mind that there is no explicit explanation as to how this works. People just have a certain interpretation of it. Verse 16 of that chapter also does not label the greater and lesser lights as the sun and the moon specifically. So we are left to make an interpretation about that as well. Anyway, I'm going to briefly discuss this and a couple of other things as well as concerning moonlight. And I'm going to explain to you why we keep hearing arguments like this come up. It was a plan set into motion a long time ago and it has resurfaced in recent years. It's not God's plan. So this was a video request sent out by Dragonier 003. And there are a few parts to the question that was posted. But first, let's take a look at the idea that the moon emits its own light or is an originating source of light. And since I'm not having a debate here with anyone, I'm just going to lay out my arguments and those of you watching can make up your own minds. Now. The phases of the moon provide strong evidence that the moon's light is reflected sunlight. The moon goes through a cycle of phases. The new moon, crescent, quarter, gibbous, and full moon as it orbits the earth. And these phases occur because different portions of the moon's surface are illuminated by the sun, depending on the relative positions of the earth, moon, and sun. If the moon emitted its own light, we would expect it to always appear as a full circle, rather than going through distinct phases. During a lunar eclipse, the Earth comes between the Sun and the Moon, blocking the sunlight that reflects off the Moon's surface. This causes the Moon to appear darkened or even reddish in color as it passes through the Earth's shadow. If the Moon emitted its own light, a lunar eclipse would not occur because the moon's light would not depend on sunlight. The fact that the moon darkens during a lunar eclipse directly contradicts the idea that it generates its own light. 
The moon's surface temperature supports the idea that it reflects sunlight rather than emitting its own light. The moon's surface can reach up to 127 degrees or 260 degrees Fahrenheit during the lunar day and drop to negative 173 degrees Celsius or negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit at night. These temperature fluctuations are consistent with a body that absorbs and then radiates heat from the sun. If the moon were generating its own light, we would expect it to have a consistent surface temperature rather than one that varies dramatically between lunar day and night. We make these calculations based on mathematical equations and other methods. Now there is something called albedo. It's basically how much light a surface reflects. I know all about albedo because it's something that I have to take into consideration when rendering images with 3D objects. The moon's surface has been studied extensively through moon rocks brought back by the Apollo missions and remote sensing. And these studies reveal that the moon's surface is made of materials that reflect sunlight based on their albedo, not emit light. The reflectivity of these materials explains why the moon is visible from Earth. If the moon emitted its own light, the composition of moon rocks and the moon's reflectivity would not align with our observations. But of course, if you don't believe that the Apollo missions were real and that the moon rocks are fake, I completely understand and you don't have to accept that explanation. Now, the scientific consensus here is that based on centuries of astronomical observations and space exploration is that the moon reflects sunlight. This is consistent with the behavior of other celestial bodies like planets and moons in our solar system, which are also visible due to reflected sunlight. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see these other planets through a telescope without starlight. Someone rejecting this view would require rejecting the principles of physics and astronomy that explain the behavior of light in celestial bodies. CERN wouldn't be able to do what they do without knowledge of these particle physics. And yes, there is a lot they still don't know, and sometimes they get stuff wrong. Nobody is perfect when it comes to science. But if you're the type of person who thinks you're smarter than Newton or Einstein, then go ahead and prove them wrong. Now, there is another question that came up about the idea that the moon makes shadows colder. And again, this is a common claim among some flat earth proponents. And how did I know that this is a flat earth concept? Because I've been down this road before. And I've been looking into these concepts for close to a decade now. And I'm going to explain where this all comes from in a moment. So shadows, whether caused by the sun or the moon, are simply areas where direct light is blocked. In the case of sunlight, shadows are cooler because they block the sun's direct rays. And the radiation from those rays are a source of heat. When the moon casts shadows, the temperature difference between the shadowed and non-shadowed areas is trivial because the moonlight is much weaker and does not significantly affect temperature. Because the warmth we feel from sunlight is due to infrared radiation, which is part of sunlight. The moon reflects visible light, but very little infrared radiation. Because the moon reflects only a small amount of infrared radiation, its light does not have a significant warming effect. Shadows cast by moonlight might feel slightly cooler, but this is due to the general lack of sunlight, and not because the moon's light or shadows are cooling anything, you see? There have already been experiments using thermometers to measure temperature differences in moonlit and shadowed areas. These experiments consistently show no significant cooling effect from moonlight or its shadows. Any observed differences are typically within the margin of error or are influenced by other environmental factors like wind or the surrounding landscape. 
Anyone making claims that moonlight causes cooling effects with an at-home experiment are not supported by controlled scientific measurements. Instead, these claims are often coming from anecdotal observations without proper controls. Making this mistake might come from the fact that at night, the absence of the sun leads to a general cooling of the environment. People might mistakenly attribute this natural nighttime cooling to moonlight or moon shadows. Nighttime cooling occurs because the Earth's radiating heat back out without the sun's warming effect. The moon's presence doesn't cause additional cooling because it's not a heat source. The type of surface, grass, concrete, etc., the presence of water, air currents, all have to be taken into consideration when looking at temperature differences in shadowed versus non-shadowed areas at night. Any cooling effect in moon shadows is more likely due to environment rather than the moonlight or shadows. Now, another point that came up was that sleeping in moonlight may cause illness. And let me tell you, this idea is rooted in folklore and cultural mythology. Moonlight is simply reflected sunlight, but it's much weaker. It lacks the intensity and in ultraviolet radiation that can cause sunburn or other health effects associated with sunlight. Have you ever heard of anyone getting moonburn? So, since moonlight is not strong enough to cause any direct physical harm, there is no foundation for the idea that sleeping in it could make someone sick. Again, the idea that moonlight can cause illness, some people call it moon madness or lunacy. And that is an ancient idea. In ancient cultures, moonlight was thought to influence mental health, possibly due to the moon's connection to nighttime and sleep patterns. You've probably heard of people's mental state being affected by the moon when it's full, right? Well, I don't totally dismiss that idea. I don't think it has no effect, but unless you're a werewolf, I don't think it's something you have to worry about too much. Any sickness experienced after sleeping in moonlight is probably due to all the other things that can make you sick, but not the moonlight itself. This may be due to how your body heals and removes toxins while you're sleeping. It's kind of like after a person drinks too much alcohol, they go to sleep first, then wake up later with a hangover sometimes. So we could be talking about toxins here. Dehydration, right? Some people might find it uncomfortable to sleep in bright moonlight, especially during a full moon, which could disturb sleep patterns. And the person doesn't get enough quality sleep, which makes a person fatigued or makes a person more prone to illness. But this is not a direct effect of moonlight. Keep in mind that the power of suggestion and psychological factors can sometimes cause people to feel sick, especially if they believe strongly enough in a particular superstition or myth. That is a real thing that sometimes occurs, where the belief in an effect causes real symptoms even though there's no physical reason for the illness. We know that happens. Now, let me tell you where this all comes from. And pay attention because this is very important to understand and many flat earth investors may not realize this. In ancient Mesopotamian mythology, the moon god was known as Sin or Nana. The moon was often personified and considered a divine entity. The exact nature of the moon's light was not understood, so it was often thought of as a luminous body in its own right, similar to the sun. In ancient Egypt, the moon was associated with several deities, including Thoth. While the Egyptians had advanced knowledge of astronomy, the idea that the moon might emit its own light was not something they dismissed. Thoth, as the god of the moon and wisdom, 
was often depicted as providing light during the night. So, of course, they supported the idea that the moon emitted its own light because of their god. Many Greeks, including people like Aristotle, believed that the moon was a luminous object, possibly emitting its own light. The transition to understanding the moon as a reflector of the sunlight came later. In Vedic and later Hindu mythology, the moon Chandra was often related to a god and associated with light. You see, earlier myths and cultural beliefs treated the moon as a luminous entity, shining its own light. The Maya and Aztec had complex calendars and astronomical systems, and the moon, again, was associated with deities and its light was seen as part of its divine nature. The specific mechanics of the moon's light was not really important at that time. So they viewed it as a source of light rather than a reflector. Do you see the common theme here? The belief in multiple gods, right? Now you can believe in and worship whoever you want to. You have the right to do that. But this is something that has been in place since the beginning of man. Anything to get you to stray away from the one true God, even when you don't realize it. The devil has been around for a very long time, and he knows how to make things seem magical. He even knows how to make you worship other gods, even when you think you're worshiping just one. Well, that's all for now, and there is more to come. I do have a recommended video for the day. Watch that video. It will be linked on screen at the top right corner of this video and in the description box and pinned comment below. Please hit the thumbs up button on your way out. Leave a comment and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Everyone have a wonderful day. Don't take disagreements too personal. I love you anyway. Your salvation is way more important than the physics of this world. Take care, and as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon. Every minute of every day, your body heals, repairs, and regenerates you from the inside out. Yet everyday exposure to heavy metals and toxins builds up and blocks your body's natural abilities. Natural zeolite is nature's answer to our toxic body burden. Breakthrough sound wave technology creates the world's first colloidal zeolite. Touch tone essentials Pure Body Extra Colloidal Zeolite helps clean out the chemicals from the body with an easy to use spray so you can make room for healthy in your life. Click the link in the description box below to order your supply of Zeolite today because now is the time to live your best life.